The Open RAN ecosystem has grown dramatically during the past year, and one of the many companies now developing and supplying the enabling components that turn theory into reality is Xilinx. To find out more, I'm talking today with Liam Madden, Executive Vice President and General Manager for the Wired and Wireless Group at Xilinx. So, Liam, great to talk to you again. Uh, what does Open RAN represent for Xilinx? So, you know, Open RAN really gives us a major opportunity to broaden our market penetration. Um, you know, some analysts, I think, have said that uh, Open RAN will have up to 40 to 50 percent penetration in five to seven years. Even if you don't take that optimistic view, nonetheless, we think it will have a significant impact on the market and uh, on an expansion in revenue uh, for Xilinx. Of course, that's not to forget that there will still be significant number of traditional uh, deployments with operators, and we continue uh, to supply our technology uh, for those deployments as well. And uh, what role does Xilinx play in the Open RAN ecosystem? And how do you support the development of technology that's driving Open RAN networks? So really, Xilinx plays in all aspects of uh, Open RAN, whether it be uh, the radio, uh, whether it be the distributed unit, um, or indeed uh, the centralized unit. You know, from uh, a radio point of view, obviously that's where we have the most exposure, but we still uh, participate in DU, for example, in acceleration and in the CU uh, from a security point of view. You know, in the radio area, I think our partner Mavenir announced in the last uh, couple of months or so that uh, of 11 uh, radios that they saw in Open RAN, nine had Xilinx technology in them. And the types of customers that we deal with with Open RAN are companies like Fujitsu, KMW, Sterlite, VBDN, and MTI. Of course, we did have an announcement with Mavenir where we're going to uh, offer a joint portfolio of radios with Xilinx uh, really offering the highest performance massive MIMO cap capability. The thing that's driving uh, in radio is RFSOC. And uh, that's, uh, from my perspective, the way I look at it is it's like a single uh, chip radio that's capable of providing 4x4 uh, and 8x8 capability with a single device. And then by using multiple devices, uh, you can expand into 32 TRX or indeed 64 TRX massive MIMO. Uh, RFSOC also has capabilities hardened for the DU, and that would include uh, things like um, uh, uh, RSFEC, uh, which is the uh, capability uh, to do uh, very complicated encoding. We're currently shipping in mass volumes for RFSOC. Um, and I also uh, did want to mention our RFSOC DFE. This is a product we announced last November. Its capabilities are really enhanced by hardening in an ASIC-like way a lot of the DFE capability. And that allows us to compete head to head with ASICs in terms of power, cost and performance. OK, so a, a lot of capabilities already developed there. But what are the current requirements of your partners and customers around Open RAN products, especially in terms of enabling them to deliver or enable commercial rollouts? Yeah, I think we're seeing um, you know, a lot of announcements uh, these days around commercial rollouts. And really, um, you know, the technology that we uh, provide covers the entire gamut of 5G, whether it be small cell, whether it be macro, uh, whether it be uh, massive MIMO, or indeed millimeter wave. We also have uh, technology in the millimeter wave uh, area as well. You know, these days, operators are looking for getting uh, a lot of coverage. And that really requires uh, the technology that's uh, in Massive MIMO. And as I said, uh, you know, RFSOC plays very strong there in the RF side of things. But we also have our new Versal technology, our seven nanometer technology that supports advanced beamforming. In fact, uh, our Versal product is currently being deployed uh, in a tier one uh, in North America right now. If we look at other geographies, um, we know that India has been delayed a little. Uh, but we do expect uh, deployments to start in India next year once the auctions happen, which will probably happen early um, in uh, 2022. 
You know, when we look at what uh, operators are looking for, they're looking for uh, multi-carrier uh, capability. In Europe, particularly, they're looking for high output power, maybe greater than uh, 300 watts. They're also looking for, you know, three to 400 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth and greater than 200 megahertz of occupied bandwidth. So all in all, these are very stringent requirements, but we're very confident that our uh, technology is capable of that. And do you have any new announcements that show how Xilinx is driving momentum in the open RAN market? Sure. I think, uh, you know, one of the announcements we'd like to make is that our RFSOC DFE product is now shipping to customers in engineering samples. And uh, one of our lead tier one customers will actually go to production with that device later in the year when we take the device to production itself in December. I'd also point you at our recent announcement with Mavenir, uh, where we're offering a, a unified massive MIMO uh, portfolio with Xilinx uh, providing the highest performance massive MIMO uh, radios. I'd also mention our partner Fujitsu, uh, who of course are working with DISH networks uh, here in the US but also have domestic uh, uh, deployments in Japan. And last but by no means least, uh, NTT Docomo uh, will be joining Xilinx at the MWC Power Hour, and uh, we're really happy to cooperate with them on that. Okay, so lots of exciting developments in Open RAN and beyond for Xilinx at the moment. Liam, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you very much.